Taylor, how should we spend our Christmas break? Well, it's negative 12 degrees outside, so it's the perfect temperature to curl up by the fireplace and read a good book. All right, let's find a book. Hey, what's this? Looks kind of interesting. I don't know, it looks pretty old and boring to me. Well, it's obviously old. It's by William Shakespeare. He died like a million bajillion years ago. Well, that's false. He actually died about four centuries ago, but close. We are clearly stuck inside, so we might as well try this book. Yeah, but before we start reading, we should research some background information on this author named William Shakespeare. The famous William Shakespeare, who was referred to by over 80 different names, for example, he was sometimes called Shaxbird and Shapir, was born on April 23, 1564, in Stratford-upon-Avon in the United Kingdom. His parents were John and Mary Shakespeare. Before John met Mary, he was a farmer. John moved to Stratford and began a trading business. He eventually married Mary, and they had eight children together. William was their firstborn son. He survived through childhood, unlike his two sisters before him, who died after two months and a year. John Shakespeare worked his way up in the town of Stratford and held important political positions such as bailiff, which resembles a mayor. William attended the King's New School in Stratford, otherwise known as the Stratford Grammar School, as a young child. Although there are no records of his attendance, scholars have pieced together information to surmise that William's father's prominent political position as bailiff would have made it possible for William to attend the school on free tuition. He most likely attended the school until he was 15. In 1582, William Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway at the age of 18 when she was 26. At the time of their marriage, she was three months pregnant with their first child. After their firstborn child, they went on to have twins. His children's names were Susanna, being the oldest, and his twins, Judith and Hamnet. After the twins were born, the last years began. The last years are seven years of William Shakespeare's life where there are no records that exist. There are theories of what he could have been doing during this time, but nothing is confirmed due to the lack of records. It is believed that William Shakespeare was an understudy or possibly an actor for the Queen's men. He was also an actor for Lord Chamberlain's men and later the King's men. He had part ownership of the Globe Theatre in 1599. The Globe seated about 2,000 people and later burned down and was rebuilt. Shakespeare wrote 37 plays and 154 sonnets during his lifetime. It is believed that Shakespeare wrote his first play at the age of 25. He wrote an iambic pentameter. The results were plays and sonnets that had 10 syllables per line and did not rhyme. The Tempest was probably written between 1610 and 1611 and was performed at Court by the King's Men on November 1, 1611 for King James. It was performed two years later in celebration of the marriage of King James' daughter, Elizabeth, to Frederick the Elector Palatine of Bohemia. The Tempest was the last play written fully by William Shakespeare. It is one of his two plays out of 37 that is completely original. During the time it was written, the English colonial mission was transpiring. Some of the characters in the play resemble power-hungry men. The scene we will be performing is Act 3, Scene 1, in which Miranda and Ferdinand confess their love for each other and plan to get married. In The Tempest, there are many important characters that contribute to the plot of the play. Prospero is the former Duke of Milan that was robbed of his throne by his evil brother Antonio. He is a magic being and has the power to punish his enemies. Him and his daughter Miranda have spent 12 years on an island in isolation from all life besides a witch named Sycorax, her son Caliban, and a spirit named Ariel. Miranda is a daughter of Prospero who has lived on the island since she was a young child. She has seen no other men besides Caliban and her father until the day that she runs into Ferdinand. Ferdinand is a son of Alonso and heir to the throne of Naples. Alonso is the king of Naples. He helped Antonio dethrone Prospero as Duke of Milan. He regrets his past actions and feels guilty for what he did to Prospero. The play starts with a large and violent storm constructed by Prospero. He conjured the storm using his magic from an island in the middle of the sea in order to get revenge on his evil brother Antonio and the king of Naples, Alonso, who dethroned Prospero 12 years ago. Prospero's daughter Miranda wants to ensure that no harm has come to any of the sailors on board the ship. Prospero tells Miranda that it's time she knows where she came from and who she is. He tells her that he was once the Duke of Milan and he was known for his intelligence until one fateful day when his own brother plotted against him. Prospero explains to Miranda that because of his intelligence, he became uninterested in politics. This gave Antonio the power to usurp him. Antonio, along with the king of Naples, Alonso, took the throne of Milan from Prospero by banishing him and his daughter to an island. 
Prospero and Miranda have been living on the island for 12 years when Prospero constructed the storm. He did this with the help of Ariel, a magic spirit living on the island. The Prince of Naples, Ferdinand, is separated from his father as well as the other men on the island. He sees Miranda on the island and immediately falls in love with her. Miranda has seen no other man besides Prospero and Caliban, the ugly witch Sycorax's son, so she sees Ferdinand and thinks he is the most beautiful man she has ever seen and falls in love. As Miranda and Ferdinand are falling in love, Alonso, Antonio, and other lords are looking for Ferdinand on the island. They cannot find him anywhere in the island, so they continue to search for him. Now we will be performing Act 3, Scene 1. Miranda and Ferdinand are confessing their love for each other in this scene. Prospero wants Ferdinand to prove he loves Miranda, so Prospero makes Ferdinand work for him. This scene is an interaction between Ferdinand and Miranda. I will be playing Ferdinand. And I'll be playing Miranda. You look wearily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me. When you are up by night, I do beseech you, chiefly, that I might set in your prayers. What is your name? Miranda, oh my father, I have broke my hest to say so. Admired Miranda, indeed the top of my admiration, worth what's dearest to the world, full many a lady. I have eyed with best regard and many a time, thy harmony of thy tongues hath bondage, brought by my too diligent ear, for several virtues have I liked several women. Never any with so full a soul, but defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed, and put it to the foil, but you, O oh you, so perfect and peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know, one of my sex, no women's face, remember? Save from my glass, mine own, nor have I seen, more that I may call men than you, good friend. And my dear father, how features are abroad, I am skillless of, but by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you, nor can imagination form a shape, besides yourself, to the like of. But I prattle something too wildly, and my father's precepts I therein do forget. I am in my condition, a prince, Miranda, I do think, a king. I would, not so, and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow in my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did, my heart fly to your service, there resides to make me slave to it, and for your sake am I this patient log man. Do you love me? O oh, heaven, O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound, and crown what I profess with kind event, if I speak true. If howly, invert what best I boded me to mischief, I, beyond all limit of what else the world, do prize love honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I am glad of. After Miranda and Ferdinand plan to get married, Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo, who are Alonso's jester and butler, are wandering around the island trying to kill Prospero. Then the play goes back to the lords. Antonio is trying to convince Alonzo's brother to kill Alonzo. Ariel enters in the form of a harpy, which is a monster with a woman's head and the body of a bird, and accuses the men of pushing Prospero out of Milan and taking his throne. Ariel explains to Antonio that because he banished Prospero and Miranda to the sea, his son Ferdinand is also at the mercy of the sea. Alonzo feels regret for his role in banishing Prospero and tries to drown himself. Prospero thanks Ariel for her work, and gives his daughter and Ferdinand his blessing for them to marry. Three spirits appear and bless the couple. Ariel warns Prospero of Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo's plot to kill him, and together they trap the thieves. The play ends with Prospero giving up his magic and going back home with the forgiven Alonzo and Antonio. A main theme of the Tempest is forgiveness. Prospero forgives his brother and Alonzo for dethroning him, even though Alonzo was the only one who apologized and was truly sorry for his actions. As this play was written during the Renaissance, another theme is knowledge. Prospero fails to do his political duties because he is too consumed with reading and learning more information about magic. The pursuit of power is also shown throughout the Tempest. Antonio is so power-hungry that he takes his own brother out of power and makes a deal with the king of Naples just to be in a powerful position. Prospero also wants to be powerful with the help of magic. Even though he forgives Antonio for banishing him, he still conjures the storm using magic. Experts have also said that the Tempest is about colonialism. Prospero and Miranda take over Sycorax's island, rule the land, and push their culture onto the inhabitants. The English colonial mission was happening at the time The Tempest was written, and some think that Shakespeare was writing about the issue of English colonialism, because England had colonies all around the world in the 1600s. We chose the scene where Miranda and Ferdinand confess their love for each other because it is a famous scene in The Tempest. We thought it was important because it shows that Ferdinand truly cares about Miranda enough to work hard and carry logs for Prospero.
Many professionals have said that The Tempest is one of William Shakespeare's most entertaining works. As previously mentioned, it is the last work written fully by William Shakespeare, and it was a great way to end his career. In summation, we personally believe that The Tempest is the best book we have read so far by William Shakespeare, because it is clear and easy to understand as well as entertaining. The plot can be interpreted many different ways and therefore can be left to the imagination.